Hey guys, I watched a video just a minute ago about a girl who did a bunch of succulent beheadings and it inspired me to come out to my greenhouse this morning and do some of my own. Um, and I've had this tray laying here for a while with some kind of seedling type mix. It's got a lot more um, coconut coir in it. But some of the things I have laying around in these big uh, containers, I've thought about beheading just because I've got so many of them. Like these little carny color sedums, I'm probably gonna cut those off. Maybe some of these little mariners, kalanchoe, some of these. Um, but I'm just gonna go through and see what all I have and fill up that little tray and stick them in there. The dirt is dry, so I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you what I have when I'm done. All right, well, I'm not done yet, but I wanted to go ahead and show you. Here's just the first one I chopped. Chopped it like this and then I pulled the leaves off. And all I'm gonna do is see if I can do this with one hand. I'm just gonna nuzzle it into the dry dirt and that's it. I'm not gonna water them for maybe five to seven days just to make sure that the ends callus over and then I will probably just start watering them and wait for roots. So now I'm gonna fill this tray up and I'll be back. Well guys, I'm back and here are all the leaves that I popped off the stems to fill up this tray. And I've got the tray completely full now and these are all just little cuttings off other succulents I had in the greenhouse. So, got some California sunsets. Um, these little holes in the middle of, of these trays, I decided to use those too and use like smaller ones. But I've got ghost plants, some jelly beans, um, some of those um, rombo pilosa, some jade, kind of a little bit of everything. So. All I'm gonna do is put these in a place where they don't get direct sunlight and I'm not gonna water them for five to seven days. And then after that, I'm gonna start watering them gently with my mister and they will all grow into new plants. So I wanted to show you that. And then in just a second, I'm gonna show you two um, echeverias that I beheaded that are now growing roots because I just saw them a second ago. So I'm gonna show you in a second. So here are my two echeverias that I beheaded and I could have sworn I saw roots on this one, but I didn't. And you're probably wondering why I beheaded it so low. Um, the stem was really, really long. And at the time that I beheaded it, there were leaves all the way down to there, but the plant was looking really dehydrated. And when I did some investigating, I found that the very bottom of the stem under the dirt had rot. So I chopped it uh, at this point where you see my thumb now, but over time while waiting for the roots, the, um, the leaves that were dehydrated have fallen off. So it's not that I chopped it really low, it's just that they've fallen off and I'm still waiting for this one to make roots and it hasn't yet. And I'm really tempted to cut it again right here, but you can see it's, it's running low on water. So what I may do is just plant it and start watering it, and that may uh, encourage some root growth. So this is an Echeveria Jennifer, and then I'm not really sure what this one is, but this one had much better results. You can see right here, roots are growing right where the chop was. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant this and start watering. And this one's gonna be big too. I can't remember what kind it is, but it's a Giboflora of some type. So I wanna show you that, and then, um, and we may get to some other things uh, as far as beheading. I'll show, well, actually, while I'm right here, um, I bought a really etiolated Dick's Pink one time and I chopped the top off. And so this is a baby that has grown out. If you look really closely, it actually has roots. So I could chop that off and plant it also. Um, so I got that and then I had another baby off that one too. So. Some things I've done with beheading. I've got some other ones that I beheaded a while back that are doing pretty good. Like, for example, I beheaded this guy. Um, this is the stump and this is the new pup. And if you look at the original plant, it was some sort of giboflora with bumps, but it's doing really well. That This is the original plant that I chopped. And if you look, uh, well, actually I can't even pull it up anymore. So the roots have really taken hold. So. 
really am pleased with that one because I only had one and I have no clue what the idea is, but it was so big and pretty. And by the time I beheaded it, um, it had gotten a little leggy. So now I have two and I'm just waiting for that other one to um, grow some roots. Although it doesn't really have to, I could just cut it off right now, but let's see if I can get it off without bumping into anything. Yeah, uh, I don't wanna cut it off just, just yet because the longer it stays in this pot, the better it will grow. So I'm gonna leave it alone. And while we're up here, here's my sea dragon. But anyway, I wanted to show you some beheading stuff. If I find a few more things, I will put that in the video too. I have some other ones that look like they need to be beheaded, like this Valeria right here. It's looking a little leggy. And then, um, what else do I have? Maybe this um, raindrops right here could be beheaded, but I kind of like the way it looks. And right now it doesn't have too many drops on it. I think I see one, so probably need to water a little bit more but it's winter, so I don't want to make them mad. Um, okay, so my afterglow definitely needs to be watered. So I'll do that when I get off the camera. But wanted to show you guys that, and if you have any questions on beheading, let me know. Bye-bye. All right, guys, so one more thing I'm gonna put in this video, which I know has nothing to do with beheading, is, um, what can I do with all these propagations that I've done? Because I got to thinking, oh my gosh, why did I do all these? And now I don't know what to do with them. So I found these cute little pots at Home Depot, um, or Lowe's, I mean, and, um, and they're real shallow. So I'm gonna try my best to completely fill them up and then just see what they turn into someday. But uh, I've got a little bit of everything. I have no clue what a lot of them are. Some of them I know what they are, like there's a Rhombopilosa. Uh, um, this isn't even um, a succulent right here. I don't know, maybe a seed fell in there. But anyway, I'll come back and show you my little arrangement and then I'll probably make that the end of the video so I can upload it and do some other stuff. But wanted to show you that and mainly just wanted to show you the beheading. So, um, okay, bye-bye. All right guys, I'm back and I went through that one tray and also this tray and I put together a lot of little babies and I've got this cute little pot here. So I'm gonna let it just kinda take off and see what happens. But I've got some chromas, some superbums, California sunset, kind of a little bit of everything. So. Um, this is the first one I've ever done with all these propagations because I didn't know what I was going to do with all these guys. So we're just going to see how this turns out. So if you stay tuned to my station, then I'll someday give you an update as this thing grows out. But I just wanted to show you what I was going to do um, or what I did with these guys. But anyway, thank you so much for watching my station. If you will subscribe, then you can keep updated on everything that I'm doing. And I'll definitely be doing more with these props because I have another bowl for one. And then I have a whole bunch of little two inch pots and they're super cute. So I think I'm gonna make some tiny arrangements. But anyway, please subscribe and comment if you have any questions or comments. And thank you so much for watching. Good night guys.